The carnage that enveloped the world during the first half of the 20th century was in many respects a manifestation of conflicts that had roiled Europe throughout the 1800s. In the wake of the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars, a series of meetings that came to be known as the Congress of Vienna were held in the Austrian capital between November of 1814 and June of 1815. This conference of European ambassadors, which was dominated by representatives from Austria, Britain, France, Prussia, and Russia, met for the purpose of redrawing the boundaries of Europe. In their mission to preserve the peace by apportioning land and resources between the five powers equitably, the concerns of smaller political and cultural entities were essentially ignored. This new paradigm, which redounded to the benefit of the most powerful monarchies, caused widespread resentment and fueled a variety of patriotic movements. This growing nationalism inspired a greater use of folk tunes in art music. These indigenous materials not only served as points of cultural reference, the musical syntax of a country's folk music expressed essential qualities of a nation's character. The extent to which so-called nationalist composers combined native and cosmopolitan elements in their music varied widely, but because they usually came from countries that were under the control of a larger foreign power, these musicians and their work became emblems of resistance and cultural pride. There was Chopin from Poland, Smetna and then Dvorak from Bohemia, Liszt from Hungary, and Sibelius from Finland. In Russia, the European lineage of the Tsar was subtly rebuked by the music of composers like Rimsky-Korsakov, Mussorgsky, and Borden. And from Norway, which had been under foreign domination for centuries, came Edvard Grieg. Grieg was born in 1843 on the west coast of Norway in Bergen. His parents encouraged his interest in music, and at the age of 15, he traveled to Leipzig to study piano at the conservatory, where a former colleague of Beethoven and Mendelssohn, Ignaz Moscheles, supervised the piano department. Upon his graduation in 1862, he returned to Scandinavia, where he eked out a living as a conductor, piano teacher, and performer. His early attempts at composition were fitful, and even after he had established himself as a composer, his principal income-earning commitments and chronic ill health often made the process of writing music difficult, particularly when composing long-form works. His breakthrough came in 1868, when, at the age of 24, he wrote a work that still beloved, his piano concerto in A minor. In January of 1874, Grieg received a letter from his compatriot, the playwright Henrik Ibsen, which contained a proposal. Seven years earlier, Ibsen had written a play in verse about the Norwegian folk antihero Peer Gint, a lovable rogue who leaves Norway seeking fame and fortune, experiences a series of wild, sometimes disastrous adventures, and then returns home, where he's redeemed by the love of a woman. Ibsen intended the play to be read, not staged, but the success of its publication led him to change his mind. He asked Grieg to write incidental music for a staged version of the play and provided a list of suggestions regarding what type of music was needed and where it should be placed. Grieg accepted the commission and began working on the score during the summer, although he'd eventually conclude that he was the right man for a work of such witchery and so permeated with the Norwegian spirit, progress was slow and he complained to a friend that the subject was unmanageable. But by the fall of 1875, he was done, having written almost 90 minutes of music that's divided into 23 individual numbers. The successful premiere took place the following February in Oslo. Grieg later took eight of the score's numbers and arranged them in two four-movement suites. These suites contained two movements, Morning Mood and In the Hall of the Mountain King, that became iconic both within the classical repertoire and popular culture. And yet the remainder of Grieg's incidental music is worthy of note. Although he was a gifted songwriter, Grieg never wrote an opera. But when we listen to his complete music for Peer Gint within the context of Ibsen's rollicking play, we are provided with a tantalizing hint of how a Grieg opera might have looked and sounded. 